everyone. I'm Tenny Gale and today I have a word from the Lord. We have been blessed with a word. It has been a while, but the Lord has blessed me with a word, you know. I've been doing what the Lord has, you know, been telling me to do, you know, trying to be obedient in the name of the Lord. <laughs> I've been trying to be obedient, you know, the Lord hasn't, you know, led me to come here and say anything until today. So, you know, welcome everyone. I'm Tiny Gale. Like I said, you know, this is our channel, the channel of the Lord, one of, you know, many channels of the Lord, you know, Roots of Christ. And, you know, I invite everyone, you know, people who have, you know, subscribed, those who have been just watching new viewers we welcome you all we welcome you welcome you welcome you and yeah let's just get into the word of our living and true and one and only god our father watch in heaven our sweet and amazing savior our abba father our jehovah jari our emmanuel our high priest our ishi lord our shiloh our beautiful emmanuel Sweet Jesus, we welcome you, Father. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for a new day. We thank you, Lord God, for this beautiful day. This is the day that you have made, Father. We will rejoice and be glad in it, Father, Lord God. The enemy's lies that we need to focus on the past because, you know, our best days are in the past. But we come against that in the mighty name of Jesus. Our best days are today in this present moment because you are with us. Our ever-present, omnipotent God, our heavenly Father, we love you, Lord. We treasure you. You are our daddy. You are our father. You are our king. You are our light, Heavenly Father. Almighty God, you are the light of our world. Sweet Jesus, we love you, Lord, and we welcome you always. You don't need an invitation, Father. You are welcome. I pray that you will take over this channel, Almighty God, as your people hear you. Place crystal clear, Father, Lord God. You are thirsty. Feed them with this word. Heavenly Father, your word. Let myself decrease and let your spirit get the victory completely in the mighty name of Jesus. I love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Amen. So the word that the Lord has blessed us with is let us go. And you know, I'll begin with the dream that I had last night. You know, last night I had a dream about someone. And in this dream, this person was really displaying, you know, a certain demeanor. It was, this person was really acting like they were evil. I know that this person was not like this in real life, but the enemy was trying to plant this seed of deception, you know, but I knew that this person was not evil. And many times I come here and I say, you know, don't just believe the things that you dream. I always ask the Lord, confirm with the Lord, you know, people that are meant to help you, the enemy will come and present them as evil people. You will have dreams about them that seem so real, you know, in the past I would have believed in it. You will have dreams that would seem so real and you're just like, Oh my goodness, this person is thinking evil towards me when it's just not that, you know, it's not that enemy likes to twist things. So you always need to ask the Lord, you know, Lord, is this dream of you or is it of the enemy? Because sometimes it's actually a true dream, you know, that the Lord is showing you that this person isn't with you 100%. But you always need to ask the Lord and, you know, the Lord has been showing me witchcraft, you know, witch craft all right so we don't like to talk about witchcraft who likes to hear about which i don't like to hear about witchcraft like in the past i was just like witchcraft like i didn't do anything where's this coming from <laughs> you know i never used to like it before i was called i never used to like to hear about it um if someone said you know i i don't feel well you know it's probably witchcraft i'll be like no, it's natural illness, you need to go to the doctor. No, you know, thank you Holy Spirit. Like, no, I just got reminded of something, you know. There was an attack on my heart once, you know. Um, like months ago, there was an attack on my heart and my heart just felt, you know, sick. I just felt sick, you know, like there was something going on with my heart every night. Every night, not during the day, but nights, I would have issues with my heart. And I was like, Lord, is this a normal thing or is this you know spiritual i 
felt, honestly, I felt like it was normal and I was like, oh my goodness, do I have a heart condition, you know? So, I was like that, but I started to pray about it. I started to pray, like, I started to come against that ungodly illness and immediately, immediately, I promise you, immediately, the heart issue went away. So that is what I'm telling you. Sometimes you feel, you feel in your spirit, you feel it, you feel, you actually feel something happening to you. And you're just like, no, this pain, it has to be something. I feel horrible. I need to go to the doctor. I need to get checked. I need to do a surgery. When it's really witchcraft. You know, if I had gone to the doctor, the doctor would have probably said, you know, something wrong with your heart. This when that is not so because i'm fine now i don't have any heart issues i'm absolutely fine because i've been praying about it and the lord has had mercy upon me and answered my prayer so many conditions that you you have and you're facing is not actually you know an actual illness it's witchcraft Wherever the pain is, you need to remember, you need to stand on Isaiah 53, verse 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. It is not, he was wounded for his transgressions. It was for us. It is by his stripes that we are healed, and you need to hold on to that word and say it is by your stripes this pain is going away in the mighty name of jesus i am be being healed in the name of jesus even in this very moment while you're feeling the pain you need to say that because faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen so even though you're feeling that pain you need to have faith that it is going away the enemy will come up against with strong come up against us with strong forces strong manipulations because we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against spiritual wickedness in high places so you need to come against that spiritual wickedness you know these high powers these sorceries or you have to get come against it I feel the spirit of living God. You have to. You have to make up your mind and say, I'm for God. It doesn't matter what I'm feeling. We need to really, you know, stand on the word of the living God. Have faith. This is what faith is about. This is what faith is about, you know. And you know, I was told by the Lord that I should get baptized. And some people are going to say, so this girl was on YouTube speaking to me and she wasn't baptized. Like, no, I was not. When the Lord called me, I did not know anything. Trust and believe I didn't know anything like that. The Lord taught me everything that I know. Witchcraft, how to live, how to dress. The Lord is my... <laughs> the Lord, Lord, you have taught me everything. The Lord has taught me everything that I know. Like, I can't take credit for anything. I did not know anything. This is brain of mine. I was in my own world. I didn't know anything. So when the Lord called me, you know, I said it before, <laughs> I thought that fornication was okay. The Lord never told me about fornication. The Lord never told me you, you're going to get baptized at a certain time. You will need to. He never said that. He just called me, told me, you know, I need to create a YouTube channel. I will put the words in your mouth. Do what I need, what I need you to do. Do it. The Lord told me, his voice came to me and said, you need to get baptized. And I was like, yes, Lord, I will get baptized. And I always think, you know, it's in the future when the Lord is actually saying, you need to do it now. Like, that is what he's saying. But because he said it so lightly and so sweet, I was like, okay, Lord, we will have to choose a church where, let me know. <laughs> that, was like, that was what I said. But, you know, like a few days ago, it wasn't long ago, the Lord told me, you know, you need to get baptized. And this time he said it sternly. It was very stern. And I said, okay, Lord, where will I get baptized? And he told me where I need to get baptized. He told me where. And I said, okay, Lord, I will get up and do it. But I need your help because you know who I am. Lord, you know who I am. So I got up and I got baptized when I was going to the 
place where I was going to get baptized, I saw a sea, and I was like, Lord, I was like, in myself, I was like, well, the Lord never said I was going to get baptized in a sea because he told me, you know, in the river of the water, that was what he said during the day, you know, twice he said it to me, and he said to me, take pictures, that is what he said, I don't know who needs to be convinced, but he said, take pictures, so I'm going to let you see the pictures of, you know, my baptism, Thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding me. He told me twice, so I guess it was, it's important for someone. It's important for something. So he said, take pictures. So, you know, I wasn't very fussing about the video, but he said, pictures. So I took the pictures. And, yes, that was you know my baptism and you know I am grateful that I am you now fully you know baptized and baptized and walking with the Lord you know you know you've seen this channel you've watched my video he was with me before he is still with me I was walking with him before I was baptized so my life does not begin after big baptism it just continues on this narrow path and that is where i always urge people you know spend time with the lord get to know him he is so beautiful he's so sweet he's so awesome he has his own way of speaking to you the way that he speaks to me perhaps it won't be the way that he speaks to you he speaks to us according to how he knows you know we are you know he's very sweet and i think of the lord he's very very sweet and he's very very honest you know he's not going to lie to you but he will let you know things, you know, he will always comfort you, you know, whenever he tells you the truth and it's a bit, he will always comfort you, like he always tells me the truth, you know, and I really love and appreciate the Lord, you know, after, you know, the baptism, we were in church and the pastor gave me a hug, right, he was led by the Holy Spirit to hug me very tightly, and like when I sat down, you know, I remembered my prayer unto the Lord. I asked the Lord, you know, could I get a hug from you? <laughs> I'm always asking the Lord about hugs, honestly. I've asked him so many times. <laughs> I've asked him so many times for a hug. And people will say, you know, Tony, is do you lack love? Why you always ask the Lord for a hug? No, I mean, I'm not lacking love but the lord's love is the greatest love for me before i was called i never before i was called i felt like there was something missing in me it was missing in me so it's like there was nothing that could fill me up nothing you know it was like an insatiable feeling i needed to be filled up i needed the lord and like i really appreciated it that he hugged me in person you know I'd been asking him for a hug and I had a vision once of someone hugging me and it was not the Lord, it was the enemy and I asked the Lord, Lord is that you? And he said, you know, no, I would not hug you in that way. So what he did was he gave me a hug in person, in person. He hugged me in person, he remembered me and he gave me that hug, you know, so he listens to every prayer I'd been asking him for months before and I stopped asking him, you know, he listens to our prayer and he knows. He knows, you know, he knows what you need and when you need it. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> so, yes, and he gave me a scripture. It is taken from 1 Samuel 19, verse 9 to 17. And it says, And he was spirit from the Lord was upon Saul, and he sat in his house with his javelin in his hand, and David played with his hand. And Saul sought to smite David even to the wall with the javelin, but he slipped away out of Saul's presence, and he smote the javelin into the wall. And David fled and escaped that night. Saul also sent messengers unto David's house to watch him and to slay him in the morning. And Michael, or is it Michelle? I'm not sure. Michael, I'm just going to say Michael. Lord have mercy, I'm just going to say Michael. David's wife told him, saying, if thou save not thy life tonight, tomorrow thou shalt be slain. So Michael led David down through a window and he went and fled and escaped. Michael told an image and 
took an image and laid it in the bed and put a pillow of goats hair for his bolster bolster sorry and covered it with a cloth and when Saul sent messengers to take David she said he is sick and Saul sent the messengers again to see David saying bring him bring him up to me in the bed that I may slay him and when the messengers were coming behold there was an image in the bed with a pillow of goats here for his bolster and Saul said unto Michael why hast thou deceived me thank you Holy Spirit why has why has thou deceived me why has thou deceived me so and sent away mine enemy that he is escaped and Michael answered Saul he said unto me let me go why would I why should I kill thee so many of you are saying let me go but what you need to understand is the enemy will not let you go because you're holding to something that is up you're holding on to something that is up him okay so we need to know that god did not give up give us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind he did not give us these things these are spirits so we need to know that there are spirits that are of god which is love and there are spirits that are of the enemy we are part, part we should be partakers of the lord's table and never partakers of the enemy's table so if you have the spirit of jealousy and you have you know said it's okay this is how i am you are not praying about it and you know you are fully aware that this spirit is not of god then you are of, you know you are off that part that table you are off the table of the enemy and uh, without even knowing if you know that you know the spirit of jealousy is not of God and you if you're just leaving it like that then you are off the enemy's table you need to pray against the spirit of covetousness pride jealousy dishonesty these are spirits that we need to pray against even if you still have it continue to pray against it and these are things that we need to pray against daily the Lord says that you know if you desire to follow him pick up your cross daily and follow him deny yourself and pick up your cross daily and follow him you need to know that we struggle daily i have my own struggle you know we all have struggles you know i struggle with pride i struggle with my own stuff and i pray about it daily i come against it because i don't want anything to separate me from god you understand so you have to know what you're struggling with and pray against it the spirit of comparison it is not of God Saul had a spirit of jealousy he it, it, it controlled him because why would a person try to harm the same person who is able to heal him he whenever David played a javelin he would be healed he would feel better because you know the Lord had set an evil spirit upon him you know and so why would you do that because if you if he were to kill David if he was successful at that then no one would be able to save him that is showing you that he did not care about his own life anymore he was completely ruled controlled by the spirit of jealousy and so when you have that spirit of jealousy you know when it comes upon you the first time it came upon Saul was was when the the, the Israelites said you know Saul has killed his thousand and David had killed killed his ten thousand so when he recognized you know that he had that spirit of jealousy what he needed to do was pray about it and there was one time he really recognized it when he tried to kill David and David made peace with him and said you know I'm not trying to kill you I could have killed you but I I didn't do it you know because you are the Lord's anointed and he was like wow David really is a good guy like he's a child of God but you know he knew that he had the spirit of jealousy but he did not work on it so today whatever you're struggling with you need to pray about it don't be ashamed if you have jealousy pray against it acknowledge it don't leave it like that and be like oh i'm fine this is how i've always been you know i gossip all the time you need to pray against the spirit of gossiping you need to pray against the things that are not of God let the Lord pray a prayer asking the Lord to you know really open up your eyes to the things that are not welcome into his kingdom jealousy covetousness pride and you know comparison they are not of God 
And so when you have these things and are being heavily controlled by them, you know, this is how witchcraft, you know, witchcraft really, you know, comes upon you heavily because you still have things that are of the enemy. You know, fornication, you need to pray against that as well. Okay, I used to be like everyone else, you know, before I was called, I wasn't the best, you know, I still have my own struggles, but, you know, I am celibate because the Lord transformed me, not because I decided, oh, I'm worshiping the Lord, serving the Lord, I need to be celibate, no, it wasn't, it wasn't like that, that wasn't my story, it was like, you know, I followed the Lord, the Lord transformed me, and I realized, oh, I really, I'm celibate, and, you know, the Lord has laid it in my spirit that this is right, you know, so he freed me of the spirit of fornication and, you know, blessed me to be celibate and then he laid it in my spirit that you are doing the right thing, just like he did with my baptism. He called me away and I followed him and then when it was the right time and he saw that I was truly walking with him and committed, he said, it's time for you to get baptized, you know, so he knows you know when to do it do it the right time to transform us and so you know I would everyone's situation is different you need to go to the Lord with the with your situation there's nothing too hard for thee there's nothing too hard for the Lord if you have financial issues whatever issues that are causing you to you know be out in the world speak to the Lord about it don't let anyone tell you you know you're condemned because you've done this you're doing that no it doesn't matter he died for all of us not one you know and so whatever situation you have don't be like, Tennis, I'm too old, I can't go to the Lord. Don't be like, Tennis, I'm too young, Tennis, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. It's too much. There's nothing hidden before the Lord's eyes, you know. It says that in Hebrews. And so when you go to the Lord and you tell him all of the things that you think are so horrible, he already knew about it, you know. Believe me, he already knew about it. And so you don't need to tell people your struggles. You, need, you just need to go to the Lord, you know, the only high priest. Who is worthy to judge but never actually does judge you know he's very merciful and kind and forgiving and so if you turn to him he will answer you you know just go to him with his things that you're struggling with let him know your situation he will help you if you continue to go to him before I was called there are many things that I was struggling with things that I never thought that I would get out of and you know situations that I never thought that I would get out of and I would be like Lord get me out of here get me out of here get me out of this let me stop doing this help me to stop doing this that I don't like this you know that was always my prayer for years and the Lord heard my prayer but he never delivered me until it was the right time so you know he doesn't condemn people he never condemned me when I was in the world he was still with me guiding and protecting me you know helping me even though I was living the best life you know and so this is just to show you and I'm just trying to let you know that you are not condemned it doesn't matter what you have done or what you're doing no the Lord understands your situation just take it to him because you know if you fornicate and you continue to say that this is right you know even though you're doing it you're doing the wrong thing and you justify it you know doing the wrong thing is one thing but to justify it, that's another thing don't ever justify it. what is wrong is wrong and so when you bring this thing to the Lord you know ask him for deliverance because if you don't you know you might think oh you know this is too big I can't stop doing this the Lord can create a way for you it's not for you to know the way but to believe that the one who created this world who is your Heavenly Father or Hal Shaddai or Adonai who can create a way for you is the only one who knows the way and who can create a way because he is God It's not for us to know the way but for us to believe that he can make a way and so it doesn't matter how big the situation is the problem is he can make a way and that is how you show that you have faith by taking that problem that you think is so big to the Lord because you believe and know that he is bigger and so when you pray against fornication it's good because you know even while you're fornicating even while you have sinned you know pray against it because you know if you fornicate and there are people who say you know how come I pray and the and, uh, and uh, witchcraft you know has been you know oppressing me I've been oppressed I've been you know going through this thing you know how come and I pray you know it's because you have something of the enemy you're fornicating and when you fornicate and witchcraft is done on you 
most likely it will happen to you. It will happen to you because it's not of God. And so you might pray every night, but because you're still fornicating, it might happen to you. And you know, we need to still work on, we need to work on these spirits of comparison, of jealousy, of gossiping. You know, you know that you've gotten to a point of being totally controlled by gossiping when you start to gossip about people that have not done anything to you, about people that are good to you. And many people justify it, but you need to not justify it. We should not be doing that. You know, we need to pray against it and ask the Lord for deliverance. Sometimes that is what is hindering you from being delivered and you don't know that because you continue to walk in the way of the enemy and you justify it. You're just like, oh, I gossip. That is just me. But then you're asking for deliverance and the Lord has made it clear to you. Gossiping is a welcoming, welcome into my kingdom. You know, if you have... If you're struggling with it then you know continue to pray against it God isn't asking us to be perfect you know he's just asking us to be we can be better better women and men in Christ you know and so when he asks you to pray against these things it's because we're not perfect and if you're not perfect that means that you always need to be fixed you know what I mean so we all have something to pray about and pray against and you know we need to just you know, be in collaboration with the Lord, be in partnership with Him, you know, to spend time with the Lord, get to know your Heavenly Father, the man who, you know, created this world, who is actually our Father, you know, we are not of this world. And so, yes, that is my message for today. Continue to stay blessed, you know. I pray that the enemy will let go of you in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that the devices and the schemes of the enemy will not prosper in your life in Jesus mighty name and I pray that we will all be covered under the precious and holy and wonderful blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth so yes stay blessed